Our Jobs Spooky Spots. Chapter 1. The Seamstress I am painting in the garden when Great Aunt Raven finds me. Put your things away, Ella, she says. It is time for another odd job. I sigh and place my paintbrush in the jar of murky water. Great Aunt Raven's garden is dead and dreary. The bushes are covered in prickly thorns. The only flowers are those on my paper. I was just about to start the roses, I complain. What is it this time? Great Aunt Raven holds a gold pocket watch in her pale hand. Its thin metal chain sparkles against her long black skirt. She checks the time and snaps the cover shut. We're late, she says. Follow me. Her heels click, click, click against the stone. I don't ask again. Great Aunt Raven's odd jobs are always a surprise. I stand up. In my hurry, I knock over the jar and spill water into the paint. A trail of red spots drips onto the page. My painting is ruined. The air is hot on our walk to Windy Hollow. My throat aches for water. My feet hurt. We pass the old town hall. Its doors are boarded up and windows blacked out. The iron gates creak back and forth. This town still creeps me out. I think. Great Aunt Raven stops at a building across the street. The sign reads, Seamstress. I will be back before dinner, she says. She walks away. The door opens. A woman stands inside. She is holding a needle. Chapter 2. The Washroom Come in, come in, the woman squeaks. I am Madam Pintuck. She takes my hand. Orange hair spills from her head in frizzy heaps. Silver needles stick out of her curls. Bits of thread hang here and there. Her cheeks are painted pink, but the skin beneath is gray and wrinkled. Droopy eyes hide behind thick black lashes. Her lips are red. Her teeth are yellow. Do you like my dress? She asks. I made it myself. She twirls clumsily. The billowy folds of her skirt are made of mismatched patches of fabric. The bodice is a busy floral pattern. Her sleeves are sewn together with blue yarn. I force a smile. It's very pretty, I lie. The air in the room is damp and heavy. It smells of sweat and soap. Piles of clothes cover the floor. Overflowing baskets lie on their sides. I've been very busy with my sewing. She says, frantically. She picks up a blouse and shows off her work. Jagged black stitches stretch across the silk like a scar. The strokes are uneven. The yarn is frayed. I've had no time for laundry, she says. That is why I need your help. Follow me. Madame Pintuck leads me down a hallway, stepping on the clothes in her path. We arrive at a small washroom. A metal tub sits in the center, filled with cloudy water. Mounds of dirty laundry dot the ground. She reaches into her apron and pulls out a soiled sponge and a bottle of slimy liquid. Wash anything that's dirty, she giggles and walks away. In the corner, there is a lone cedar armoire. Curious, I open the door. A white lace dress hangs inside. It sways back and forth, glowing in the darkness. Near the heart... It is stained with red spots. Chapter 3. A Lace Dress I take the dress off the hanger and walk to the tub. Carefully, I dip the delicate lace into the water and squirt soap onto the spots. I push and pull the sponge, but nothing happens. I try again. Still, the spots remain. That's strange, I think to myself. I try a different piece of clothing. A pair of pants covered in dirt. The dark water soaks the fabric and the dirt fades away. Next, I wash a shirt covered in crusty bits of yellow. Again, the stains come out. I try the lace dress for a third time, but the red spots stay in place. You won't get it clean, says a voice. I gasp. A woman stands in front of me. A white robe drapes over her bony shoulders. 
The fabric flaps around her thin ankles. Her ebony hair is pulled back into a bun. Her eyes are wide. Her skin shines. You startled me, I say. Can I help you? She stares at the dress and takes a step forward, drawn to it like a magnet. You won't get it clean, she repeats. Haven't you heard of the widowed bride? The warmth is sucked from the room. I shiver. No, I say. I am new here. I moved to Windy Hollow after my parents died. The woman reaches out and takes the dress from my grasp. Then let me tell you about her, she says. Chapter 4 The Widowed Bride Long ago, a beautiful woman was set to marry a handsome man, she says. All of Windy Hollow was invited to the grand wedding feast at the town hall. I think of the crumbling building with its black windows and locked doors. The woman holds the dress in front of her. The red spots hover near her heart. She sways back and forth, dancing to music in her head. She stops suddenly, her eyes narrow. But on the wedding day, the young man died tragically of fever, she says. There was no grand wedding feast. No happily ever after. She drops the dress. It lands in my lap. The red spots stare up at me. That's terrible, I say. What happened to the bride? But there is no answer. I look up. She is gone. Madame Pintuck darts into the room and snatches the dress from my hand. You were not supposed to touch this, she hisses. I sewed this long ago. Her fingers rub the red spots. My skin prickles. What happened to the widowed bride? I ask. I know she knows. Madame Pinta closes her eyes. She died of heartbreak, she whispers. This was to be her wedding dress.